Hello, how to craft a winning cover letter? If you haven't seen my video on how to craft a winning CV, please check it out. Link is in the show notes of this video. So this video is all about cover letters. So cover letter for the uninformed, it's just one page, uh, you know, the letter that you enclose when you apply for a position, for example, a job or a PhD studentship or if you're applying for a grant, you know, the project, the search grant, for example, or if you're submitting a journal article. So you would be, of course, uh, you know, you'll be enclosing one document in the first page, right? That is called the cover letter, right? So usually it is around 400 words. Too lengthy cover letter, eh, nobody is going to read it. Okay, so beware of it. It should be very, very short. So typically in one A4 size sheet, max, 1.5 uh, you know space so or one space is also fine so it is just one a4 size sheet never exceed the, your cover letter uh, it can contain around three to four paragraphs you know as i told you 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 need this cover letter for applying for a job or inter even internship you know so i get a lot of uh, letters uh you know seeking positions under me in in my lab here uh, for internship you know short term like two months project so of course you need a cover letter so by the way cover letter uh, though the the word me, word is like letter doesn't mean always physical even an email is fine you know so typically this is a first document your potential employers or whoever you are applying to like journal uh, editor will be reading without even looking at your cv or statement of purpose and all those things first thing which they are going to read is your cover letter so is really really important and most of the employers take your cover letter as a heuristic to really consider the rest of the application or not so if your cover letter is badly crafted what is going to happen is that they will simply trash your entire application they won't even look at that because the quantity of applications they get is enormous friends only one or two professors who i mean how nobody has time you see thousands and thousands of prospective applications especially if you're applying for a you know direct phd position in europe so european professors get like tens of thousands of email so how can they actually check out to which email is really genuine and which one is really motivated which candidate is really motivated that is what i would like to tell you the cover letter should indicate your motivation your inspiration for that position you know so it's a heuristic so they simply dump the majority of applications at the first step, the cover letter. For example, in my case, whichever cover letter salutes me as sir slash madam, I click delete. I don't care <laughs> if they don't even know my name. Uh, if it's the cover letter is not even returned directly to work with me, why should I care such application? You know, so that's a heuristic, right? So that's a shortcut that employers usually do that. So CVs and resume, if you haven't seen, please check it out. The link is in the show notes of this video. So your CVs and resume is uh, nothing but a third person narrative. You don't say that I did this, I did that. No, it's like third person. But the cover letter is first person narrative, just like your statement of purpose, which I will release a separate video on how to craft a winning statement of purpose too. Okay. So the cover letter is explanation of how those facts which is presented in your CV will make you a great fit at this job you're applying or whatever, you know, whatever the position or grant or a, a journal article which you're submitting. Why the article is a good fit for the journal? So that is the reason why the cover letter is really important. So what are my top tips for writing a winning cover letter? The first tip is be intentional, spend time, be prepared for the cover letter. Don't take it for granted, you know. Uh, copy paste doesn't work right so read about like if you're applying for a job in a company read about the company and what are their vision right what are their uh, long-term goal how you're uh, you're a good fit for it you see how your visions aligns with the company's vision all those things you really need it so i suggest you take an a4 size blank paper and take a pen or a pencil and craft plan it be intentional friends right so yeah, so what their current, uh, what are their expectations for the project or the position and how you are a good fit. So those things are what you have to write on the cover letter.
okay rather than simply boasting yourself that you are a good person i have a great communication skill no that doesn't work right be very specific to which company or which studentship you are applying for a, a studentship that is a phd position with a professor say why you are interested in that professor right and tailor make cover letter for each position that you are applying don't use a generic cover letter and just you know randomly sending out to all professor it doesn't work simply you're wasting your time okay so uh, avoid uh, salutation i already told you just avoid that salutation sir slash madam very common here in india many students approach me like that sir or madam person don't even know that uh, my gender you know so it's really bad you know it, it it means that you are not motivated it means that you do, you are uh, you know you are careless or you are lazy you know you don't even have time to see my name you see that or to whom it may concern another kind of a generic salutation very bad please never do that it doesn't work that way okay and be precise and succinct be succinct that means that don't use a lot of words but be to the point use as less words as possible to express to communicate very well right for which my suggestion is to use bullet points rather than simply writing paragraph and paragraph just use bullet point because you know attention deficit is usually the case with very busy people like professors you know so if you are simply explaining in bullet point they will appreciate it that means that you know you are concerned about the lack of time you know that is what it is so yeah so remember that potential recruiters get very large number of such uh, emails you know so that is what right and start your cover letter with a very brief introduction of yourself and to which position you are applying because you know recruiters can have multiple position and they might be confused to which position you are applying so be explicit in your first sentence or two right and then uh, you know but before that you know remember that your cover letter should be less about you but more about the company position or journal you are applying for if you are submitting a paper you should write more about the paper it's not about you as a person you know separate it out why you are a good fit to the company that is what you have to write it right and of course you can mention some notable achievements or experiences or strength for your application that are relevant to that position you are applying for so that relevance is extremely important rather than simply uh, for example you are applying for a, a phd position and you won uh, a gold medal for dance and the position has nothing to do with the dance and what is the point of writing all those things you know you can even uh, i won't even suggest you to mention those thing in your cv forget your cover letter cover letter is very brief right so extremely relevant only you need to do and be precise on it use exact figures for example i published more than 50 journal article that is in a very ambiguous statement instead of say that you know i have published 53 journal article you know it's not like a large number of publication again that is a vague be very precise and be to the point right and also mention or provide some of the links to your published works article for example or creative content if you are applying for some creative positions for example you know you are applying for a Uh, a botanical illustrator for example so if you have already made some interesting adobe illustrator works then put in a, a repository and put the link you know your works can be seen in this link so that is very interesting you know you're showcasing your potential right and mention your motivation and expected outcome briefly so if you are getting selected what are what are your contributions uh, what you expect uh, you know that you are going to contribute to this company so that really important right expected outcome right and what aspect of this position are you most excited about and why why are you excited about that position you know that you can write it and finally sign off uh, your cover letter with a positive note and thank them profusely for their time to read your cover letter if they really made it up to that stage right thank them for their time you know for example thank you so much for your consideration and i hope to hear back from you soon so that is a very positive way to end of your cover letter isn't it and definitely you should sign your letter uh, with the place and date from where you are writing and date so this is very very simple but people uh, you know they they miss it really simple things that that's why i suggest you to make a checklist of all these points 
before uh, you send out the cover letter, you know, or the entire application package, right? The place and date is really important. And provide your mailing address, including your phone number, email, uh, you know, all these things should be there in the cover letter. Right? So otherwise, there's no way for them to contact you, right? And list out whatever the enclosures or attachment that you're putting. If it's email, it's an attachment, right? Or if it is a physical, then enclosures. You put one, two, three, four in a bullet style, right? And be original. If you plagiarize your cover letter itself, that's a sure way that they will simply trash it. Right? So be original in it and also proofread your cover letter is extremely basic but still uh, you know people overlook it the importance of proofreading and also cliche M most of these cliches are a sure way to land you your application package in their trash. Uh, cliches to avoid include I am a go-getter you know very often used cliche very bad right. I'm a perfect fit. Don't say it. Show it. Show that you're a good fit for the position, right? If you're saying that I'm a perfect fit, that is a cliche. That means that you are a nonsense person, right? Other cliches. I have excellent written and oral communication skills. Why you want to say be a bombastic man or a woman? Don't say it. Show it that you have good, you know, provide links or attach some of your 11 writings. So that other people will know it okay this person has it so in such cases your your abilities uh, rather than explicit implicit information is always tactical right and i think outside the box thinking outside the box itself is a cliche highly abused cliche i would say very bad you know it's outdated uh, you know thinking outside the box don't say like that or uh, as you can see in my resume so the sentence starting like that, of course, they, they will look at your resume if they are interested. And if you are saying like this, as you can see from my resume, they will not even check your resume. They will, they will trash your entire application package. You know, so because these are all cliche. I recently I'm involved with one of this very important meeting, upcoming meeting. OK, so I'm looking at the application and one of the applicants said that I'm an asset for Indian Academia. Oh, look at that, how bombastic the person is. I'm an asset for Indian Academy. I'm not impressed, you know. And uh, your cover letter's purpose is to explain how your previous experience will make you ready for this position, this job. You know, how you are a good fit for this particular position. So beware to explain this fundamental aspect of, in your cover letter. For example, I can do this. Uh, you know, because I did this, I can do X because I did Y. For example, I can uh, I can uh, be a good uh, you know I I can do uh, you know content uh, creator for the online teaching because I worked on similar projects before on MOOC something like that. No, so why your skills or skill set is a perfect embodiment for the position that you are applying for that is what you have to explain in your cover letter and at the same time you explain your you uh, explain that you understand the job well that is also very important right so that is what uh, you know the, the potential employers will say that see that are you really motivated for this position or not your motivation level so cv becomes just proof for that you see that cv you're, you're putting all the cv right so but cover letter is more about your motivation why you're really applying for it right and also to improve your chance of getting uh you know noticed right i suggest you to send a physical application by express courier in addition to the email so that is you're really motivated that is what it means if you have some special you know special uh, uh, employer in your mind to which you are really interested to apply, you know, send it out by Express Courier, you know, so they will check it out your application in addition to the email, right? So that is uh, that is the 15 tips which I would like to share with you. And there are some specific tips if you are applying for the PhD position because I get a lot of such emails. My first comment is that if you are applying to a professor, use a professor's name in the salutation. In India, the, usually the practice is that sir or madam. Right? If it's a male, sir, respected sir. No, that is that's a cliche. Might work here in India, but in abroad, 
never do that just salute with professor or doctor and by the way the person is a professor then it's better to use professor someone and if the person is assistant professor then better to to salute the person as a doctor if the person has a doctorate and if it doesn't have a doctorate then saluting as a doctor itself is not good it's kind of an insult but if the person is associate professor onwards then professor salutation is the most appropriate right and also mention in your application where you came across this advertisement for the phd position you say that i came across a position at this blog or this journal whatever be right so do it and in case you are contacting without any advertisement with you you don't even know that there is a phd position open then you mention that professor's recent article uh, in the peer reviewed journal whatever the article be specific let, let, let's say that i read your article in latest issue of pnas and i'm really interested to work in this project i have this idea you know so be very specific right be very personal in that cover letter rather than simply copy paste or generic cover letter it doesn't work and also mention why you think that research is interesting you know then the professor is more likely to to know more about you you know so that is uh, my idea my uh, recommendation to you and also mention relevant experiences or publications that you have that shows that you are well fit for this position have you did some internship or do you have a, an article on similar lines but on a different concept doesn't matter you know so lateral or cross thinking is also very very important right so even if you don't have the direct exposure to that uh, whatever that professor is doing but you have an aligned field that has a skill set that is a good fit for the what professor is looking for mention it you know that's a relevant information and uh, in addition to these three tips i also want to share some more tips for uh, cover letter for publication you know like for example if you're submitting an article for the journal you know so what what to mention in that cover letter so first is that you please mention the title of uh, you know that articles that you are submitting whatever the article you are submitting mention the title and to which journal you are submitting because you know that editor might have various articles the same editor is looking after right so be very specific the title and to which journal you are submitting that should be your first line and also mention some salient features of your work right in bullet point that is what i prefer uh, my prefer preferred style indicate why that work is important why it's interesting right and what is it basically the, the the main conclusion of your study and why that study matters so those are the point that you have to be explicit about you know and what is a new pieces of information that is revealed in this paper be explicit state it out in your cover letter and also mention why you think that this article is a well fit for the journal so have you read the scopes of the journal have you read the author guidelines if yes say it out why your article is a good fit for that particular journal so that is what i would like to share with you i hope you like this video if you like it please click the thumbs up and do share in your groups and i could have uh, you know uh, many videos like this for example how to right or how to craft a winning resume and a cv you know please check out that video and also uh, yet another video is on how to craft a winning sop and also grant application for example statement of purpose right how do you write it so do check out the related videos thank you for watching and have a great day